Hello everyone, welcome to Rich's Tech, myself Karthik Purnasamy. Today we are going to look at one of the interesting topic in Java which is object class. And many people say that this is one of the toughest topic to understand how it actually works. But at the same time this is very important to understand because this is the heart of every class what we create in Java. So uh, I will make you guys very uh, simple explanation about how each method works and how it actually uh, and behaves in the real time code. So the second section of this particular video will have an eclipse where we will write a code and I will demonstrate all the methods how it actually works. Okay, let's get into the theory part and once you understand the concept, so you guys may be thinking what it actually does and you will also see how it actually works in the real time when we do the second portion of coding part. Okay, so Java object class. So object class is nothing but there is a class called object and that object class when the Java developers at Oracle or Sun Microsystems when they develop a Java language. So they thought like okay we want to develop some common modules or common methods or common functionalities inside the language so that like every developer want to use it so that like they don't need to create or we don't need to create these kind of methods or functionalities in our logic or uh, rather than we can directly uh, look into our implementation or our business logics right and that is why they make our life easy by creating these so many methods which are very useful in our real-time implementation so these methods are nothing but java you know object class methods so they put it in a package called java.lang package so this java.lang package contains all uh, you know object class and this object class contains all these methods we will go through one by one and people say you know every class directly and indirectly we are inheriting from object class so it, what does it mean so let's say i'm writing a class and i'm not inheriting i'm not extending any other class in this case i'm actually directly inheriting all these methods from the object class so basically we don't need to write these methods in our class but by default we will have all these methods inherited from the object class if it says indirectly, what does it mean? Let's say I have a class A, I am extending another class, which is class B. We have detailed uh, explanation about what is parent class, what is child class in the upcoming videos. But just for now, just think about, we have a class which extends another class, meaning like a parent class and child class. In this case, we are indirectly, we are indirectly inheriting the object class into our class. So whatever the methods they define an object class are always available to our class. So th in that case, we have to understand clearly what actually each method does so that we can use it in our real-time implementation so that we don't need to actually write a logic but we can just simply use it for our internal implementation so they have given like mainly nine methods which are mainly useful to our uh, implementation and we have to understand how this method works and i will go by one by one so these are the nine methods they have defined and two string there is a method called two string so what does it mean is let's say i have created an object of a class and if i want to uh, see the real time uh, string representation of an object for that i can call this particular method to string method which returns the string representation of an object okay and hash code so hash code is nothing but when the java program gets executed jvm internally stores the objects into the memory right so that memory actually uh, jvm generates unique number so it's not actually uh, uh, giving us the uh, memory address of a particular object but actually it, it is a representation of like you know a, a hexadecimal representation of the address memory address and actually that is a unique for every object and there is an equals method so uh, equals method can be called in order to compare the equality of an object let's say i'm creating two objects and i want to compare whether two objects are same or not in that case i can use equals method and similarly there is a method called get class so get class by the name itself we can define we can get a context that in order to get a class name of a particular um, uh, object then we can use get class right and then finalize method so finalize method is nothing but let's say as we know that so uh, all the objects what we create in our class uh, in our java program are getting stored into the heap memory and whatever the objects uh, are not referenced by any of the object reference variable that is available for garbage collection. So in our case, if I want to uh, uh, you know uh, do any garbage collection, right? So in that case, this method is getting called just before the garbage collection is going to collect the object to make it collect uh, you know garbage. And there is a method called clone of. So clone of actually returns a new object which is same as the current object. Let's say I have a object A and I want to create. I want to clone this particular object so meaning like it's a copy of but actually it is going to create a new object let's say uh, a dot clone of meaning like it is going to create another uh, object of the same type or the same object right so these are the main methods which we are using in our daily uh, program and there are three more uh, special methods we can say uh, wait notify notify all so these methods are mainly we use it in our multi-threading environment or uh, concurrency uh, environment web programs so basically 
these methods i have detailed explanation about all these methods in detail uh, in our multi threading concepts so hopefully you will guys see in the uh, upcoming uh, uh, sections of the videos so that will be very uh, detailed context where i will be explaining in and out of given left and right to all these methods how it actually works so and people sees like you know this is also very complex but i make it very simple for you guys so it, you guys will feel more comfortable so this is the main uh, methods which we use it in our uh, object class in java but don't worry about it we will go through the uh, eclipse program where i will uh, demonstrate all the methods in in detail so that you will get a clear idea about it and if you guys have any questions on this video you can always post your comments in the comment section right so that i can also uh, see what you guys think about it and how you guys understand this concept i want to just want to hear it from you guys so we will see in that uh, eclipse version right for the coding portion guys uh, i have written a uh, class called employee to demonstrate all the object methods right so here i have written a class called employee and implements clonable so for now just ignore this implements clonable because when we go through with upcoming videos on interfaces you will get to understand what is an interface how we can use interface in our program and what is the uh, use of interface okay and here i have written uh, i have written a variable called int roll number is equal to 100 so this is the employee roll number which is 100 and i have a main method so within main method i write uh, all the all the logics to demonstrate all the uh, six methods so basically i am creating an object for the class uh, employee employee equal to new employee of so this is a by default way of creating an object by using the keyword if we are a uh, new keyword we are creating an uh, uh, object and using the employee constructor we are actually allocating the memory so here e is the object reference right so here i am just trying to print system dot out print ln in that i am trying to print e so actually when i try to print e it actually internally calls dot to string method only so let me execute this program so that by the output i can demonstrate what it actually does here we go so if you see here when i try to print the object reference it is actually printing object class method employee at the rate of 7852 some uh, hexadecimal number right and similarly when i try to print e dot to string this also prints the same thing so what does it mean when i try to uh, print an object reference of a class it always internally calls to string and that is why these two both are same so ideally uh, it is a best practice to always override the to string method so that like we will uh, see uh, how uh, we want to uh, print the uh, class name uh, um, object reference and second one is hash code method so this hash code method if i say e dot hash code so basically this is the hash code written by a jvm so basically this hash code whatever it returns the hexadecimal por portion of the hash code is nothing but the 7852 e922 so um, the two string method always returns the hexadecimal uh, representation of the hash code so that is a concept okay and now let's go to the third one so get class so get class method string s equal to new string of register check in this case we are creating an object called s uh, which is of type string and we want to get a class of this object so s dot get class so this is going to turn a class so meaning like a class c when i try to print the c dot get name so i am going to get it as string java dot lang string so basically get name is the method in uh, object class which returns the a uh, type of or uh, type of the class which this object s is belongs to okay and the fourth one is equals method so basically in java uh, the object class actually uh, provides equals and equals ignore case there are two methods it actually provides i will uh, demonstrate here string s1 is equal to register check and string s2 is equal to register check so in case of string so both s1 and s2 always refers to the same um, Uh, object because string actually is a common way of uh, creating and dealing with uh, every programming so in this case in java so uh, string is immutable so basically i have separate video to explain what is immutable and how uh, spring is immutable and what is uh, string pool and uh, so many concept but for now think about string s1 is equal to register check and string s2 is equal to register check meaning that s1 and s2 are the objects of a class uh, string and it is actually holding the value register check and always refers both refers to the same object in this case s1 dot equals of s2 so equals method as i said earlier it always compare the equality of the object s1 and s2 so s1 and s2 uh, equals s1 equals s2 returns true and also s1 dot equals ignore case of s2 this actually compares the uh, the value which is stored in s1 and s2 since s1 and s2 both refers to the same object which is uh, holding the value register always s1 and s2 uh, you know data value also be equal and that is why equals ignore case also returns true 
and now let's move on to the next one which is clone method so clone method as, as i said earlier so clone method is used to uh, uh, it is actually creating a new object uh, which is same as the current object right in this case here we are creating another object which is like employee e1 which is equal to e dot clone of so e is already created an object right so here we created another first object right e employee e equal to new employee right so here we are actually create, getting the clone of it so clone is something but um, uh, shallow copy which is nothing but e dot clone of so basically it creates uh, uh, another new object which is e and that is actually getting a same uh, referenced by e1 so here earlier we have created an object e and i want to print all the variable uh, variables which are stored in e and e1 so if you see here the e dot roll number actually the roll number actually is is declared as 100 right so this 100 actually when it creates a new uh, obj object e1 it is actually copied to the new object also because in this method or here i'm not uh, actually assigning the value of a roll number as 100 to e1 but by default when we do a cloning so it actually assigns all the uh, variable uh, values to the new object as well and that is why after roll number um, of e is also 100 roll number of e1 is equal to 100 okay hope you guys understand or following up with me right and now uh, this is another method called finalize so now what i'm doing here is so this is the object right object reference we have e so i'm making it to null so what does it mean if i make it to null it means it is not going to refer to any of the objects in heap in this case whichever the objects which are not referenced to by any of the object reference in stack right those objects uh, under heap will be removed by garbage collection right which is nothing but available for gc so here i am trying to call garbage collector right so this is the way that we can also call garbage collector explicitly by default java internally calls garbage collector for a short period of time whenever um, if any of the object is not referenced it will automatically call uh, garbage collector but we can also able to call garbage collector explicitly in our case by using system.gc i am going to call it so what it actually internally does is whenever uh, uh, we call garbage collector like system.gc or if system calls internally the garbage collector to collect all the objects to be destroyed so basically it internally calls the finalist method which is nothing but um when, if you see here it is actually call this n method and when it actually collects the garbage collector right it is actually printed this one finalized method called so this also got printed so what does it mean finalized method is getting called before an object is getting uh, garbage collected right so these are the main methods what we have in our object class and notify notify all wait these methods actually we i'm going to explain in detail in the multi-threading concept but for now i want to give an explanation about what all these methods do so wait method is something like in a multi-thread environment so wait method tells the calling method to give the lock so that like you know um, and go to sleep until the some other threads enter the same amount and calls notify so basically uh, in a multi-thread environment we have a concept called lock so it actually tells the uh, the thread which is calling to give me the lock so and go to the sleep right so that like a uh, hover comes and it calls the notify in order to notify the other people other other threads right and the second method is notify it actually uh, it is actually to uh, wake up a single thread which called a uh, wait method on the same object so whichever the thread called wait method in the previous uh, uh, call and that will be notified uh, in order to notify it uh, saying that you know i'm done with my job so that is why we have to call notify method um, so it is actually it does not give actually a lock but actually it is just notify saying that you know uh, i am done with my job so you can uh, start your job like that and notify all is nothing but it is actually wakes up all the threads that called wait on the same object so let's say i have five threads which are called a uh, wait method on the same object so now all are getting into sleep mode and now if you want to notify all the five threads saying that you know you guys can wake up and you guys can proceed with your job then i can call a notify all so this may be a little tricky to understand wait notify notify all uh, but for now just think about it this is a, a very interesting topic when we go for multi-threading concepts in our uh, uh, video series so basically we have uh, many uh, classes and uh, many sections we have in that so you will get in and out of that uh, in that particular section so i hope you guys understand all these concepts here uh, like all these uh, six methods and um, i hope you guys can uh, write the same program on your uh, eclipse and try to play around all these methods and think about like why we why do we need to use these methods and how we can play around all these methods in the real time implementation and you guys can get back to me with your uh, questions and queries or whatever you have in your mind about like why do we need to use a string method to string method and how we can go um, 
new sequels method in the real time implementation so any questions if you have just bring to my table uh, like you can post your comments in the comment section i am more than happy to assist i will reply to your comments as well in the timely manner and also if you guys like this video please hit that like button and also uh, subscribe to the channel and share to your friends um i hope you guys are uh, enjoying this video series so i will see you in the next video guys until then bye bye thank you